Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over five worked examples to show you how to do problems involving satellite motion. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question one is a show that question, and it says to show that for a satellite to orbit with a radius r, the period t is given by t equals 2 pi times the square root of r cubed over gm. Well, remember for satellites, since Earth's gravitational force of attraction provides a centripetal force on the satellite, we can write that Fg is equal to Fc, i.e. the gravitational force is equal to the centripetal force. So writing down our two expressions for that, we get gmm over r squared is equal to mv squared over r. And because in our expression we're dealing with a 2 pi and t, that means we want to include an omega somewhere. So we want an omega equals 2 pi over t in there. So how do we get omega into this? Well, remember from circular motion, that v equals r omega, so we can say gmm over r squared is equal to m times r omega squared over r. So that's the same as gmm over r squared equals mr omega squared. So you could remember this, or you could just remember that another expression for centripetal force is mr omega squared for the angular velocity instead of the linear velocity. So simplifying the r's and cancelling the m's on both sides gives us gm over r squared equals r omega squared. Now remember that omega equals 2 pi over t, so we get g gm over r squared equals r times 2 pi over t squared since the omega equals 2 pi over t. And now we've got all the symbols in terms of t, 2 pi, g, m and r in our expression. So now what we can do is divide both sides by r to get this down here over to the other side and then we're going to swap both sides. So we've got 2 pi squared over t squared, so that's just separating our bracket terms of 2 pi over t into 2 pi squared over t squared which is equal to gm over r cubed, because remember we divided both sides by r. And now we want to get to t, so we're going to cross multiply to get an expression for t squared first of all. So if we do that, we end up with t squared times gm is equal to r cubed times 2 pi squared, and then dividing both sides by the gm will give us t squared equals 2 pi squared times r cubed over gm. Now notice that I've not expanded this 2 pi squared term, because we want to end up with 2 pi in our square root. So now what we can do is to get t on its own, we simply square root both sides. So we end up with t equals the square root of 2 pi squared times r cubed over gm, but the square root there and the squared term there are just going to cancel out to give us 2 pi on its own. So we get t equals 2 pi outside the square root times the square root of r cubed over gm. And that's our final answer, we've shown what we wanted to. Question 2 says, how fast is the moon travelling relative to the earth? where the mean distance between the Earth and the Moon is 3.84 times 10 to the 8 metres. Well firstly we need to be aware that the Moon is a natural satellite of the Earth, so we must be able to say that the gravitational force of attraction is equal to the centripetal force, because the Moon is a satellite and is kept in circular motion around the Earth due to that centripetal force. So just like before in question 1, we can now write down our expressions for these two terms, and we get gmm over r squared equals mv squared over r. Now cancelling the small m's on both sides and swapping over our fractions, we get v squared equals gmr over r squared. We've also times both sides by r to get this r away from the denominator and up to the other side. So we've got v squared equals gmr over r squared, and now we can cancel an r from the top and bottom to get v squared equals gm over r. Remember we want to calculate how fast something is moving, so we want to calculate the velocity v. So square rooting both sides, we get v equals the square root of gm over r, and substituting in the numbers now, we get the square root of 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, times 6.0 times 10 to the 24, both of these from the data sheet, divided by 3.84 times 10 to the 8. And if you put all that into your calculator, we should get an answer of 1021 meters per second. Question 3 says to calculate the height of a geostationary satellite. Well, you should know from National 5 and Higher Physics that a geostationary satellite takes 24 hours to orbit the Earth. Since the Earth also takes 24 hours to complete one full revolution, the satellite remains above the same point on the Earth's surface. So what we want to do here is find r and then subtract the radius of the Earth to find the height that it is. So because we're dealing with a satellite of the Earth, we can say that the gravitational force of attraction provides a centripetal force Fc to maintain the circular motion of the satellite. So writing down our expressions, we have gmm over r squared equals mr omega squared. So this time we've just gone straight to writing down our centripetal force in terms of the angular velocity omega of fc equals mr omega squared. Remember that is on your relationship sheet. And now we want to cancel the m's on both sides. So we end up with gm over r squared equals r omega squared. 
And notice that we're given in the question a period. So we're given the period of 24 hours. So we want to get the period term capital T into our expressions here. So the way we can do that is rewrite it as gm over r squared equals r times 2 pi over t squared since omega equals 2 pi over t. And then multiplying out the brackets there we get gm over r squared equals r times 4 pi squared over t squared. And now we want an expression for r so we can cross multiply here to get an expression for r cubed and we can then divide by 4 pi squared so we end up with r cubed equals gm t squared over 4 pi squared and we can now substitute in the numbers. So we get 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 6.0 times 10 to the 24 times 24 times 60 times 60 and this term over here is converting 24 hours into seconds for our period. So we get 24 hours times the 60 minutes times the 60 seconds gets us a value in seconds. So we've got all of this divided by 4 pi squared and if you put that into your calculator we should get 7.57 times 10 to the 22. Now notice that that's r cubed but we want r on its own so we need to take the cube root of each side so we get r equals 4.23 times 10 to the 7 meters if you put that into your calculator and cube root it. And remember we're not finished yet all we've done is found the value of r so to find the height of the satellite above the surface we need to subtract. So we get the height of satellite is equal to the distance r which we've just calculated minus the radius of the earth. We're substituting in our numbers we get 4.23 times 10 to the 7 which we've just worked out minus 6 6.4 times 10 to the 6 which you'll get on the data sheet and putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 3.59 times 10 to the 7 meters i.e about 36,000 kilometers which is the typical height of a geostationary satellite above the earth's surface. Question 4 says to show that the total energy of a satellite in motion is given by the expression E total equals minus gmm over 2r. Well firstly consider a satellite of mass m a distance r from the center of a planet of mass capital M where big M, the mass of the planet, is much greater than the mass of our satellite. Then like we've said before, there's going to be a centripetal force acting on the satellite causing it to maintain its circular motion, and that's due to the gravitational force of attraction. So we can say that Fg equals Fc, putting in our expressions gives us gmm over r squared equals mv squared over r, and firstly we want to get an expression for the kinetic energy. So notice that kinetic energy is a half mv squared, and we've already got an mv squared term here, so we don't need to do too much manipulation to it to get a half mv squared. So all we're going to do first of all is times both sides by r to get rid of this denominator r, so that's the same as putting the r up onto the numerator of this fraction, and then we can swap both sides and we end up with mv squared equals gmm over r. Now what we need to do to get a half mv squared is just multiply both sides by a half or divide both sides by 2. So we divide both sides by 2 and we get a half mv squared equals gmm over 2r. So we've now got an expression for the kinetic energy so we can say that ek equals gmm over 2r. And notice that this expression for kinetic energy is always positive. Now since we already have an expression for gravitational potential energy Ep, which is Ep equals minus gmm over r, and notice that this is always negative due to the minus sign, then we can write our expression for total energy is equal to the kinetic energy plus the gravitational potential energy. So putting in our two expressions now we have gmm over 2r plus the minus gmm over r. I'm just using brackets here because we've got a minus and a plus. So we get 2gm over 2r minus 2gmm over 2r. Now notice what we've done to that right hand side expression as we've just multiplied the top and bottom by 2 because 2 divided by 2 will cancel out anyway so we can actually introduce 2's on both the numerator and the denominator so that we now have the same denominator in both of our fractions. So this means we can now simplify it to get gmm over 2r minus 2gmm over 2r so we do this minus this and we end up with e total equals minus gmm over 2r. Lastly, question 5 says that a 5,000 kg satellite is orbiting at a height of 5 times 10 to the 6 meters above the Earth's surface. Calculate its EP and EK, i.e. its gravitational potential energy and its kinetic energy. And luckily we've just worked out expressions for that in question 4. So working out the gravitational potential energy first, we're trying to find EP. We know that G is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 meters cubed per kilogram per second squared. Mass capital M is 6.0 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, that's the mass of the Earth from the data sheet. Distance R is equal to the radius of the Earth plus 5 times 10 to the 6 meters as given in the question. And then we can put in our radius of the Earth which is 6.4 times 10 to the 6 plus the 5 times 10 to the 6. So we end up with 1.14 times 10 to the 7 meters for R and our mass is 5,000 kilograms for the satellite. So writing down our equation, we get Ep equals minus gmm over r 
Substituting in our numbers, we get minus 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 6.0 times 10 to the 24 times 5000 divided by 1.14 times 10 to the 7. And putting that into your calculator should give an answer of minus 1.76 times 10 to the 11 joules. Notice the negative sign because we said that EP is always going to be negative. Now remember our expression for kinetic energy was quite similar to the one for gravitational potential energy and it was EK equals GMM over 2R. Now we can actually use the result that we've just calculated by writing EK in terms of EP. And if we do that, you should see that EK is equal to minus a half times EP. Because all we need to do to get this EP expression looking like this EK expression is multiplying this by minus a half. So this simplifies how much work we have to do here. So we get equals minus a half times minus 1.76 times 10 to the 11, which will give you an answer of 8.78 times 10 to the 10 joules. And notice that this answer for EK is positive. Now, if you wanted to, you could have done EK the long way by just putting in all the numbers into this to get GMM over 2R. But doing it this way and writing EK in terms of EP cut out a bit of work for us. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.